For this video, I'm going to review Spy Hunter for the Nintendo Entertainment System. So today I'm taking a look at Spy Hunter, which was originally an arcade game that was released by Bally Midway in 1983. And it was ported over to a lot of game consoles as well as uh, a lot of home computers. The first experience that I ever had with Spy Hunter was actually playing it on the Commodore 64. Now the Commodore 64 version of the game was really, really good at the time. Um, and that came out about 1984. Now right now I'm playing the Nintendo Entertainment System version of the game. And it's competent, but it, in many ways it's actually a downgrade from the Commodore 64 version, which is kind of depressing because this came out about three years later. The music and sound on the Nintendo is actually really good. It's just some of the level design choices are, like I said, kind of a downgrade from the Commodore version. So I'll get to my pet peeve immediately. In the Commodore version of Spy Hunter, you actually could drive through a boathouse and the car would actually transform into a boat and then there would be levels where you were driving down a river and were basically being attacked by uh, hovercrafts and helicopters and attack boats. Those river missions on the Commodore version were amazing. Um, that really kind of varied the gameplay and obviously the physics of navigating a boat down a river are a lot different from driving a car down the street. The game was just a lot more engaging um, by having that diversity of gameplay. The NES game is just so, so repetitive because the mission basically just is the same and it's just this long, long drive and, you know, the scenery changes and some of the, the vehicles start changing, like you start getting attacked by these huge limos and uh, a helicopter starts showing up in the later missions where it drops bombs on the car, but uh, this game just isn't as magical as the Commodore version. So here's some cool trivia about the original Spy Hunter arcade game. Bally Midway originally wanted the 007 theme to play at the beginning of every mission, but um, I guess Eon Pictures wanted way too much money for that particular musical theme, so they actually went with the soundtrack from the Peter Gunn TV show. And I gotta tell you, that was probably the best thing that ever happened, because the 007 theme doesn't I mean, it's great, it's memorable, but it doesn't fit this game like the Peter Gunn soundtrack does. And, and if you play the arcade game, you'll, you'll know exactly what I'm saying. That Peter Gunn soundtrack makes the game iconic. So let's talk about the gameplay for Spy Hunter. So you're driving this car, and the car is armored, but not completely indestructible. You can get pushed off the road pretty easy. You can get shot at by limos that pull up to you. There are helicopters trying to drop bombs on your car. There are um, these other types of cars that have these spinning devices that pop out of the sides that are built to destroy you and push you off the road. So there's plenty of pitfalls and plenty of ways to die in this particular game. You'll notice there's a countdown timer on the bottom right hand side and as long as that's running you will completely respawn if you die in the game. After that countdown timer runs out, it's game over if you die. And that's pretty much where the game ends because there's no continues available either so it's pretty short and, and there's not a lot to do with this game. I think that's uh, something that uh, modern gamers will probably notice too is the game is short. Um, there's not a lot of things to do here. I grew up with this particular game so there's a lot of nostalgia that kicks in so I kind of overlook its shortcomings. But I think most modern video gamers who have never experienced it before, I think most modern video gamers would probably be underwhelmed with this particular game if they had never experienced it basically growing up. I think this game was kind of released in an awkward era for it. These short games, you know, these arcade ports that were based on quarter munching, they were kind of fading out and um, being replaced by games with a lot more depth like Metroid and Legend of Zelda. You know, the, the games that had a password system where you could actually pick up where you left off on your last gaming session. And this game just feels very primitive for its era. Um, I really th wish that they had something to add to this particular game. Like, uh, Excite Bike kind of had that very simple gameplay like Spy Hunter. But they at least, you could create custom tracks and give the game a little more replayability. Don't get me wrong, Spy Hunter for the NES is still a pretty fun game. It's just kind of mediocre compared to other Spy Hunters that are out there. There are cool elements to this game. For example, you can upgrade your car by pulling into a semi-truck, Knight Rider style. And that'll give you special weapons like a smoke screen or an oil slick. Or you'll also have the ability to pick up missiles to shoot down helicopters. So... There's definitely fun to be had here, it just, um, it's just over pretty quick. So what's my overall rating for Spy Hunter for the NES? 
I give this one a 6 out of 10. It's a little better than average, but nothing to call home about. Thanks for watching this review of Spy Hunter. If you enjoyed this video, don't forget to like and subscribe.